Well, new details tonight on a lawsuit against an elite college that is raising questions about the rights of young men on college campuses in America. In December of 2013, Amherst College expelled a male student for sexual misconduct after adopting policies pushed by the Obama administration. The young man who was expelled after a hearing in which he had very few rights uh, is known in this case as John Doe. He later hired a lawyer and discovered evidence which appears to clear him in the case, but Amherst will not hear it. Max Stern is John Doe's attorney. He began an interview with me tonight by elaborating on the nature of this woman's alleged rape claim. She started by saying that it was all um, uh, coerced, but then uh, when she got to the uh, investigator stage and she spoke to the investigator, she said, well, actually, it was, uh, I did it willingly at first, I just changed my mind in the middle. And just so the viewers can see what she actually testified to, because we have a transcript of it. Uh, here it is. John raped me the night of February 4th, 2012. In my initial report, I did not explicitly say that I had agreed to perform oral sex at the beginning. I covered that under the phrase, started the hookup. Regardless, when I said no repeatedly and physically pushed against him, John did not listen or pay attention to my clear refusal and held me down. Now I ask you, Max, is it not plausible, has it not happened in prior rape cases that a victim consents, and even as, though it may seem preposterous to some, halfway through says, I no longer consent? First of all, the fact that she willingly consented at the beginning at a time in which by her testimony and by the findings of this panel uh, Mr. Doe was himself incapacitated should have left the panel to conclude that she had committed sexual misconduct not him but even beyond that it became uh, clear that in fact she was really the moving force uh, behind the sex for the entire event. Because so the audience knows, John Doe had his hearing, he was expelled, and then ultimately his ex-girlfriend, who is the roommate of the alleged victim here, came forward and said, hold on, hold on. In that hearing, I, the girlfriend of John Doe, told the investigator that there were text messages they need to follow, needed to follow up on. And she, she now swears, I was surprised to see they never followed up on it. They never called any of the witnesses who were involved in texting the alleged victim on the night in question. And so now she says, I will set the record straight. I have obtained the texts and here they are. And these texts, Max, show the alleged victim, the accuser that night saying, uh, my roommate knows me. It's pretty obvious. I wasn't an innocent bystander and talking about how she's going to break it to the roommate that she had a sexual exchange with the roommate's boyfriend. She talks about, oh, my God, I just did something so effing stupid. I effed John Doe. And then she laments that he was too drunk to make a good lie out of it. When the roommate comes back, you bring all of this. John Doe brings all of this to Amherst after the fact and says, hello. And what does Amherst say? Uh, Amherst uh, considered it uh, for uh, a year and uh, declined to do anything about it. You're claiming that this is a denial of John Doe's due process rights and that it was in effect gender discrimination against a college male. Well, that's right. There was no fair procedure here. Um, he was told on November 1st uh, that he had been charged with an offense that occurred almost two years before. And uh, within six, six weeks, there was a hearing. He was expelled. Uh, he was labeled a sex offender and his future was in ruins. Um, he wasn't allowed to have a lawyer. He wasn't allowed to investigate if he even knew how to investigate because he was told he couldn't speak to anyone about it. Uh, he had to go through this. Uh, he was given an advisor who was a member of the administration uh, who himself, who, who was prohibited actually from advocating on his behalf. And so the most damning testimony as I see it, put her to the side uh, in these proceedings, was by somebody by the, by the initials of L.R. who told the investigator that John Doe confessed the assault to her. How do you defend that? Well, in fact, uh, nobody believed L.R. The investigator didn't believe her. It's clear that the, even the uh, hearing panel didn't believe her. Um, uh, John Doe was so intoxicated that everyone agreed 
uh, that he was incapacitated and they therefore uh, discredited the notion that he had confessed. The texts that were revealed after the hearing, they could have been revealed during the hearing had Amherst done its duty, but they were revealed after the hearing included the revelation that the alleged victim in this case had a sexual encounter, which she admits was consensual, with another man. Do you think that something more, so that something should happen to Sandra Jones? We're not interested in prosecuting Ms. Jones. We are simply interested in getting relief for this man who was a wonderful student. He was a first generation citizen of the United States. Uh, he was doing so well at Amherst. The world was his oyster. And in a six week a period of time, his, uh, his future uh, was in complete ruins. Uh, how how is he, he today? Spent, uh, he suffers from shame and, and embarrassment. Uh, he's depressed. Uh, he doesn't sleep at night. He has no college degree, and he has been labeled uh, a discipline problem by the school. Max, thank you for coming on and telling us his story. Uh, thank you for having me.